Hi, I'm the Sad Panda. This is going to be another episode of my series, I Read This Should You. Uh, and, but before I go into what story this is about, you probably know if you do watch my videos that I haven't posted in a while. Um, a few weeks, uh, but there is a reason for that. It's not just because I've not wanted to or anything like that, because this is uh, something that I like to do for fun, and I like to have people... Uh, read the stories that I like to read, you know, give me their feedback. I mean, as you know, uh, even though I've been busy, uh, I've still been responding to the comments that I get on my older videos, you know, because like I said, I always respond to my, my comments when I see them. So sometimes it's not for a day or two, but I, I still have been doing that. Uh, and the reason why I haven't been pay uh, making videos a lot recently is mostly because I've gotten a new job and it takes a lot of my time. And when I'm not working, I like to spend my time doing other things like I would I read I well obviously uh, but I've been playing a lot of games recently you know I've been playing Guilty Gear uh, uh, you know just doing stuff that uh, is I think uh, a valid use of my time and you know on my days off I usually go out and do stuff with like friends uh, so you know I don't have a whole lot of time to sit down record a video you know uh, express myself and then uh, edit it and post it you know all that stuff you know my videos aren't very long and there's not a whole lot of editing but it does take me a lot of time because I'm not uh, very fluent in the editor that I use and all that kind of stuff uh, but I I do I I do want to get back into doing this uh, so my plan is going to be to try to on my days off get a video out uh and i usually get uh between one and two days a week off uh thursdays for sure uh but i don't know like it's it really just depends on my manager what she wants to do with my schedule you know uh so there's that you know just uh letting you guys know in case you uh thought that i've like given up on this or uh you know forgotten about you guys because i, I do like that there's people that want to see me make reviews and there's a couple of comments that I got that were asking me to like join a discord and uh you know talk with them you know uh chrysalis discord and all that stuff and I was like oh you know that sounds like a really good idea I haven't gotten around to doing it yet but I do plan on doing that eventually and if you also notice I'm not in the location that I uh, normally do videos in because I thought a better allocation of space would be to use my spare room because I have a spare room in my apartment and I just not been using it for a whole lot of anything besides storage so there's a bunch of stuff uh, like off screen that you can't see because it's just a storage room but you know I, I have a little space here there's a little like cubby that I have so I was like oh, you know might as well do it here uh, so let's get on to the review portion of my story uh, I gotta hold on I gotta remember who the story is by <laughs> <laughs> okay, by John Doe, whatever. All right, so. This uh, episode is going to be on a story that I've read recently, uh, so it's pretty like ingrained in my mind right now, and it's one of the ones that I've uh, really liked. Because uh, as you guys know, I like uh, MCs that aren't uh, necessarily human, or they were human and they're not human anymore, so that kind of thing, and this is that, essentially. So this story is called Alien Evolution System uh, by John Doever, uh, and what this story is about, essentially, in the short, is a hive mind alien species uh, that like is all about like evolving, taking the best parts of DNA like from other alien species and using it as its own and to like incorporate everything within the collective, which is what the uh, the race calls itself is the collective, you know, and there's a certain like subspecies that are in this collective, you know, there's obviously like the hive mind itself, but there's like, um, like brood queens and stuff like that, uh, that have like, sort a certain amount of uh, auto autonomy so they can uh, go out and they can do stuff on their own but they obviously still listen to the hive mind but they have like the mental processes that aren't all based on the hive mind so this story takes place around one of those uh subspecies uh it's called uh he's called a collector and there's a uh, there's subspecies of these as well uh there's different kinds of collectors he's um he's like a warrior strain essentially so 
he goes from planet to planet, like pretty much decimating the whole thing, incorporating all of their DNA, the best DNA into the collective, and then going back to the collective, getting deassembled and like his whole his whole being gets deassembled and put into the collective and then he's reborn again as a different collector uh but you know the same thing so this story it takes place um uh, in like a crazy distant future where like humans are uh, super advanced you know we have like technology and stuff that can fight against a race that is pretty much invincible and can't die uh so like you know we're like strongholds or whatever but we, what happens is, is the collective wants to uh, cultivate a, or uh, cultivate, I guess is the best word, cultivate a planet that has been like out of range, essentially, because they use like warp gates and stuff like that to try to get around because obviously the universe is very, very big. Uh, and they use like their, um, their psionic profiles and stuff to send signals to each other and that kind of stuff. So like, even if you're at the, like the farthest reaches of the universe, uh, you can like send your like psionics to like a beacon and they'll send it to another beacon all the way to the hive mind. And then you can get like reinforcements. Let's say if a planet is too dangerous type of thing, but this, uh, this like uh, gate has been like dysfunctional and not, not working very well. And they know that there is a planet on the other side that is, uh, that has sentient life. Uh, and it also has the ability to, uh, like it has DNA that they don't have, obviously. Uh, so the hive mind sends this collector, which he goes by the collector, the entire story. So there's no name for him, but the collector, uh, they send him through the warp gate. And the first thing he notices is that the planet is super weak. Like the, his his size, uh, the way he uh, like the way he describes his size in the beginning of the story is he's like a dreadnought. Uh, if you if you play Destiny, that giant giant ship that like a person like could be on it, and it's essentially like a planet because it's so big. That's literally his like his like physical size. That's how big he is, and like he's very powerful. He could like d devour and destroy an entire planet super easy, uh, depending on like the sentient race, you know, and all that stuff. But so he goes through and the, the planet itself, he can send out his psionic profile and he can read the, like the entire planet, like for power essentially. And as strong as he is, he can tell that there is not a single being on this planet that could in any way, shape or form, uh, destroy the collector. Uh, he is like at this point in the story, like at the beginning, he's at his most powerful, uh, and like at no point in time could he be destroyed by any being on the planet. Uh, but what they, what he doesn't understand is that when he like starts to begin his like assault on the planet, a being, uh, is summoned. Uh, so he can tell that there's like a, a psionic profile that wasn't on the planet, but was summoned to fight him at the, and they're relatively the same size. And so the fight was like crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, and he gets destroyed, but he also kills that being. Uh, and he doesn't know what it is. He thinks it's like a construct of some kind, but then he realizes that it has blood. So it can't be, uh, it can't be like a machine. And because like he only has the information that he has, right? So you, you, like the, the thing is like, you don't know what you don't know. So he doesn't know what this could possibly be. Like he knows that it's a being that is massive and very powerful, but he doesn't know like where it came from, how it exists, the it exists here and how it exists the way it exists and all that stuff. So he's very confused and then he gets like destroyed, but down to like, like a little slug. Like, have you ever seen that, uh, the movie Slither? Uh, there's like these red slugs that like go inside people and like take them over essentially. Uh, he's like that. And he realizes that he doesn't know a lot about this world. So he's super smart and he takes uh, his time to like acquire power because what he can do is, like to evolve is he can eat and assimilate other creatures into his DNA, taking the best parts of the uh, of the creatures to put onto himself. And it, it's it's very well explained in the story. Like they explain how like after he evolves a certain amount of time, he can uh, keep a certain amount of like genetic material because like every time he evolves he loses a little bit of it but he gains more from what he's he took before so like 
he has like these special scales that he has that like are from before when he was the giant collector that could like withstand like nuclear missiles, like lasers, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's not obviously that strong because he has to re evolve and all that stuff. So like the story is that he's on a planet that he cannot connect to the collective at all. And he doesn't know why this is. He has two uh, thought processes where he says that it's either that he is so far away from the hive mind that it's just hard, like in his current form to send his psionic signal to like one of these beacons to send it further, which is plausible, right? He went through a warp gate to a unexplored part of the universe uh, planet, or he is like in another universe entirely. But obviously like that doesn't register right away. And he's like, that just can't be the case because, you know, uh, like the universe is so big, you know, we have, we have uh, the collective is everywhere and all this stuff. Uh, so like the, the, that's the main premise of the story. So he wants to devour and consume this planet and to assimilate it into the collective, right? And the, one of the reasons why I really like this story, right? It, it makes me feel like the character I think is very smart. Uh, like in, in, and I mean like in an analytical way, like he obviously, he doesn't understand stuff about this world, right? Cause he, he sees all of the, the, the world as super primitive, right? They don't have like, um, like they, they don't have use of gunpowder. They don't have use of like electricity and all that stuff. And to him, that is super primitive, like as primitive as you, as you can be essentially, like you're not a, even a civilized race at that point. Uh, you, you don't have like, you don't know how to harness the energy of your own star, like that kind of thing. But what he doesn't know is that there's like, there's magic here, which is a different thing that he's never had to experience before because in the universe that he comes from, right? Little spoilers that we do realize like, in like, like the 80th chapter or something like that, that he is in a different universe. And as you guys know, I do touch up to the 100th chapter. So I won't go on beyond that. There is more uh, to the story. There's like 115 chapters or something like that. So I will touch up to 100 and it's still being updated. So, you know, just letting you know. But yeah, so we do realize uh, like later on that he is in a different universe, but this universe doesn't have like technology and all that stuff. It has magic. So like, uh, and he figures this out like later on that there's like two types of magic. There's like magic that you can use like through your body and there's magic that you can use to, uh, by praying to a God, right? And what he thinks, well, what he knows, right, is that gods like humans and like creatures always have like an entity that they look at for guidance and that kind of thing so when he hears that like they get their powers from a god he he like breaks it down to the point where it's like oh so this is just a higher sapient being that has enslaved you guys hoards all the power for him their, themselves and then gives you a little bit of it to make you love them and worship them which is true in this exact situation right because the gods in this world are just another creature which is what what happened in the beginning of the story like you realize that what happened in the beginning of the story is that like the most powerful mages and like stuff on this planet which to him were super super weak right and that's an understatement even now in the story like to the point where he's evolved right now he is very strong like obviously he's not strong enough to fight these strongest like people on this planet but he's is, he's is strong right and he's super smart which is what makes him as strong as he is right because he's not strong enough to like fight them toe to toe with his like, sheer strength or sheer speed because he's just slower you know because you can use magic to like enhance your muscles and that kind of stuff but he's smarter than them so he's like he's Use, he uses that to his advantage but as i was saying he's he realized that these gods right like he could use magic but not praying to a god but like by using the body magic right uh because he fought and killed a god on in this on this planet already like he did it that's what at the beginning he realized that like these mages summoned a god and he fought it and killed it like he doesn't realize that but like as a reader you can infer that that because we know that on the planet like when he was re when he used his brain you know to like scan the entire planet he knew that there was no single entity there was no like amount of entities on that planet that could fight him toe to toe and he got fought toe to toe to a standstill to the point where he won but he almost lost like he was almost like reduced to ashes you know i will turn you to space dust type thing like it was like that kind of thing and so like 
that's just one of the things that I really like about the collector is how smart he is. Another thing that he uh, that makes him a really interesting character is the way he speaks. Like, because he only speaks in absolutes, like stuff that he is known. Like, he knows what this is. So, like, when he fights somebody, like, he will talk to them with what information that he has that he knows is true. So, because, like, he doesn't make, like, he doesn't make guesses. He doesn't guess. He makes hypotheses, uh, hypotheses, and he makes hypotheses, and then he builds on them with like information and inferences based on information that he is given which one of the smart things that he does is you may think it's weird but he takes like a slave quote unquote obviously he doesn't like make them do any physical labor or anything because he is an alien he does not care about anything like that he doesn't do anything like weird to them he literally just captures them and takes them so they can give him information because the person that he ends up uh, taking is very learned about the world so like he he gets like for a little while he has like a companion which the story is mostly him by himself like trying to learn about the world that he's on so he can like devour it for the collective right uh but he takes this person so he can get more information because to him she's he's she's more valuable as a information source than as um biomass right which is what he just sees every other creature essentially as like just biomass like the amount that they can get from each other so uh he ends up getting a bunch of information from her he ends up like awakening his magic core and all this kind of stuff but then he gets emotions that he's never had before because right he's a hive mind right and this hive mind is very very powerful and it's not it's it's essentially like like the zerg or something where it's like one hive mind controls everything but in, but the, this hive mind is way better at evolution than like the zerg uh by the, the the what they do is they take they take like the best parts of everything but they also get rid of the worst parts so like emotion right uh acting on emotion is a lot of times uh counterproductive right because like humans so to speak this let's uh let's make a little hypothesis not hypothesis make a little uh a demonstration of that would be like in a war zone right uh a mother loses her child right uh she's going to go back into this war zone to try to find the child instead of uh ensuring her own survival which uh in turn would like ensure the survival of her like family unit which maybe she has more kids or maybe she has a husband and could have more kids it's literally that whole thing because obviously you know uh he thinks in like what is the most useful uh like that kind of stuff and also like this story i don't know what it is but it makes me want to read it out loud i don't know if you've ever had that uh when you're reading something but when i read this story there was a lot of times where i'd have to be like all right i need to read this out loud because it just sounds too cool right like especially like the conversations he has with other creatures because like he literally talks he doesn't talk to them really he talks at them and he expects responses uh and when he doesn't get responses he gets really mad but he, but he doesn't get mad obviously so he just he like he, he thinks of the the best ways to get information right one of the things he does when he t interrogates uh like a like a little captain of a guards like there's a few guards and a captain and he like they're exploring because he killed a bunch of adventurers earlier so they're like trying to find the adventurers and they're like exploring whatever he captures the captain of the guard and uses fear right because that's one of the best things that you can use uh but when he realized that fear isn't working anymore he resorts to um like essentially blackmail because what he's he heard from them when he was like in his stealth like observing them because he always observes before he like engages because that's way smarter than just going in and killing something especially if you don't know their power like if let's say that captain of the guard was actually like i don't know like a grade seven like wizard which there's a grade system in this and like the higher the number the more powerful they are essentially but like a grade seven like wizard he would have just got decimated Im immediately and died like because at that point in time he was not strong enough to fight those people i mean even now he couldn't fight like a grade six or seven like i think he fights a grade five and almost dies so like it's it's crazy i i don't remember if it's if it's flipped with the grade system but i know that he almost dies to like not even a strong person like a, like they're strong obviously but they're not like the top of the the planet that he's on uh but like they're 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 not very strong in comparison to like the people that we meet to like the people that we're meeting now like we've seen like a round table of like grade nines or something like that it's crazy uh but anyway 
uh, like he interrogates him, like he like breaks, no, not breaks their legs. He cuts their like Achilles so they can't walk. And then he like lets them crawl a little bit and drags them back like to be super scary because he knows that that works. Uh, but once they over, like, they overstay their usefulness, like they stop being useful, he just kills them because they're a waste of space, uh, like a waste of time. And for him, time is of the essence because he doesn't know if these like very powerful people can find him, can track him, uh, they know where he is or anything like that because he has killed like adventurers, he's killed guards, he's killed regular people. Like he, he knows, like he's smart enough to understand that these people have abilities that he doesn't understand. Like, he's smart enough to know that he doesn't know what's going on. Like, that kind of thing, which is pretty smart. Like, if you think about some, uh, like, animals, right? Uh, let, let's say, like, a bear. Like, bears are smart, but they're not that smart, right? They don't know when they're going into a trap, so to speak. So, like, you could capture a bear in a giant cage as long as you put food inside, right? Because they don't know that it's a trap. But he could use an inference to be like, oh, I don't know why there's food in that trap, or in that little cage, but I also know, like, I also, like, I don't know that the, why there's food in there, but I also know that there could be something dangerous, so I'm going to observe. Like, that's the kind of thing that he's, like, he's just super cautious when he needs to be, which is really cool. And he also, like, uh, finds really uh, interesting ways to, like, test his limits. He's super fast at learning, like, his, uh, what is it called? His, like, uh, psionics, which is something that he can, uh, the, the collective, they can send like signals and stuff through their brain or whatever. And it's got like a huge like ba barrier. So like, you can't like read their mind if you, if you, if they don't let you essentially. And it, it's just, it's just really cool. It's just a really cool story. And honestly, I would recommend you read it. Uh, this, this is one of the ones I would give like an eight or a nine, uh, at least from where I've read so far. And it's only like 120 chapters or something like that, but it is good. I promise you it's definitely worth your read, right? This is the same way I felt, uh, when I read Chrysalis, right? Uh, Chrysalis is one of the better stories that I've read as well. You know, super gene, you know, uh, solo leveling. These are all stories that I find really good. Uh, but like, you know, obviously there's some stuff here and there, like some of the, some of the times I don't really like the way, uh, like the collector evolves even though it is a smart evolution they don't take some of the stuff that i wish that they would have from like the creatures because like some creatures can like spew uh like fire you know that kind of stuff and he does take that but i'm just like using that as an information like like as like a little example like some stuff that he takes i would wish that he would take something else like a lot of the times he uses like insects uh like insect parts and stuff uh, and then, like, the most recent evolution, he, like, got rid of some of the insect parts, which I thought were one of the most useful tools that he had, which was, like, web slinging, or not slinging, they can't, like, swing from them, but, like, to actually spin webs that are very powerful and very strong to, like, capture and that kind of thing. But, you know, it is what it is. These are one of those things where it's, like, it's just at the whims of the author, and I've really, I like, the way the story's going, so I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, it does cost coins after a certain amount of time, but I, it's definitely worth your coins, right? And I don't know if you can find this anywhere else. I haven't looked at, because honestly, I think it's worth your money. So, I mean, if you're, if you think that you would like a story where it's an alien MC with alien emotions, uh, like literally no emotions because it's an alien and then experiencing emotions, like I'm going to, Spoiler, from this point, I, I, I kind of, I, I'm not going to go past 100. This is within the 100, but I'm, I, I kind of want, I, I want you to know that this is a part that is very touching, right? Uh, so the collector has this uh, informant, right? I talked about this a little earlier. Uh, she helps him like with information, like he captures her like as a slave or whatever, and she informs him about the world, right? And they end up growing like a bond because in this world, emotions are how you trigger magic, like greed or wonder or anything like that. That's how you trigger magic. So he, uh, like in order to get his core, uh, he like needs emotions. So he doesn't know how to experience them. So he, she can connect cause she's a, uh, I forget what kind of race she is, but she has like, uh, think of the avatar people, uh, from the movie avatar, the blue, the very tall blue people with the hair that has the like things that can wrap around each other and like send signals back and forth. It's literally just like that. Uh, and he experiences that emotion for the first time. And then he be experiences other emotions for the first time, you know, like, uh, the thrill of a fight, you know, because he is, uh, a battle strain. So he does like fighting, even though he doesn't like know what emotion it is that like, like that kind of thing. Like he is like battle lust type thing. And she ends up dying. 
Uh, and when she dies, it's like th this whole thing where she she is getting chased by this like really powerful like uh, like warrior, and he and like is also getting chased, and he almost dies. Like his heart gets ripped out, but he uses magic to like make a new heart for a little bit until his mana runs out, and he dies eventually. And they like he gets away, and she ends up teleporting with him, and she that they're both like in this like winter area where it's like it's so cold that even like the fire like even the fire that he like can coat himself with is like being put out because it's so cold like it's like this like antarctica type place and she's like laying on the ground and she's like dying she's like bleeding out dying and she asked him uh like about the collective right she's asked about the collective before what it is and he always explains it as like the most wonderful thing that can ever happen to anybody you know if you're in the collective you know you're part of something bigger something more impressive you know and they, uh, they're trying to like bring the whole entire universe under one collective you know that kind of thing and to him this is a great honor to be part of the collective and as she's dying she asks if the collective is as beautiful as he says it is and obviously he doesn't know emotion but he still consoles her uh, by saying that it is and you're going to be like part of something bigger like type thing and as much as like that sounds like kind of uh like uh, like a priest telling like someone that like they, they passed away that it's going to be that they're somewhere better you know type thing but in his mind this is very true because he will consume her uh and her dna will be part of him and part of the collective uh, and as she dies, you know, he takes out her heart, but instead of like eating it, like he has with every other creature that he's ever killed in this world, like he's eaten part of it or eaten the heart, you know, because that's where the mana is. Uh, and he's eaten all that stuff, but he just stares at it. And that, and then the chapter ends and it, and it shows that he's like experiencing like emotions that he's never felt before. You know, this like grief over someone that you may not have cared about, but has been a companion for a good amount of time and has been very useful to you. And as much as like, it sounds weird to say, oh, it has been useful, but like to him, that is like the highest honor he can give you because he doesn't know how to express like love or affection, like that kind of stuff. And so like, the fact that he doesn't like consume the heart right away proves that he's feeling like this grief that he doesn't know how to experience it. And then a couple of chapters later, uh, he does talk to it. Like he's in his mind, he talks about uh, trying to figure out what this rogue emotion was, but later, and he pushes that back. And it's one of those things where you realize that this character uh, is, is very, is very nuanced in the way that, he like thinks about stuff and the way that like emotion works with him and it's super cool and once he knows that he's not in the universe that he's from it gives him a sort of like excitement because uh he that means he gets to fight stronger people and all that stuff because it's after he like learned about his emotions but it also makes him kind of sad because he can't connect to his hive mind right and you know his mission is to reconnect with the hive mind and do all that stuff and so like where the story is going now at this point i think is that because this is technically an isekai right like that's part of the genre so he he was essentially isekai to another world as an alien that his whole job is to evolve and to create a hive mind so that's his like that's his going to be his new goal i think that he's going to recreate the collective but in this universe as the main hive mind and that would be sick uh if you like this video uh please like please subscribe leave a comment you know i always respond to it and obviously if you don't like the content leave a dislike I am, I welcome dislikes. I honestly do. If you don't like the content, then tell me because I would like to make the content better. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you.